What is up everybody? Bill with Honest Open Permaculture, Hop Farm, and this video is going to be about making a compost pile. Alright, so we're going to be putting together a compost pile. We're going to do it in the 18-day method, um, the Berkeley method, uh, also the method that um, Jeff Lawton teaches, where you let it sit for four days, you put your compost pile together with all its different materials that we have here. Let it sit for four days, let it cook, and then turn it, and then every two days, turn it after that. So right now we're just gonna do the initial build and I'll take you guys along with me on every turn. We'll see what it looks like and what it smells like, what it's going through, the breakdown. I'll bring you guys with me through the whole process. But let's, let's see what we got right now as far as materials we're gonna be using to build this pile. Here we have a lot of wood chips. I've taken most of this pile. These are some really good wood chips. They're not really thick, they're not really big wood chips. They were chopped down really fine. And there's also green material in here. So these wood chips are gonna be a good source. They're already breaking down a little bit. This pile started heating up. It's been here for about a month. Also what we're gonna be using as a, a green material is some green cut grass clippings. So the wood chips will be more of a brown material this is a green material. Here's some more green material, which is coffee grounds. Even though it's brown, it's considered a green material. Here we have some plantain. We're gonna inoculate the middle of the pile with. And here's some more browns, some more carbon, which is leaves. And these have been pretty much shredded. I ran over them with a the lawnmower. There still are a couple of big leaves in here but most of them are shredded. So when we're talking about greens and browns, hey Whiskers, you climbing on the pile? Uh, greens would be the more of the nitrogen and browns is the carbon. You need four important ingredients in a compost pile, which would be a source of nitrogen, source of carbon, oxygen, and water. Those are the four big things in a, in a compost pile. I guess the best uh, mixture would be a 25 to 1, 25 carbon to 1 nitrogen ratio, or a 25 brown to 1 green, which is something you kind of have to eyeball. Uh, something like wood chips is going to be a lot higher in carbon than something like leaves. So if you're using wood chips, you'll need something a lot higher in nitrogen. So I got a mixture here of some high nitrogen stuff, some stuff that's in the middle of the nitrogen, some high carbon stuff, and stuff that's kind of in the middle of carbon. So we're gonna put this thing together. First thing we're gonna do, the bottom of it is gonna be the leaves. Then we're gonna put a little bit of wood chips on it, and then some grass, coffee grounds, and we're gonna keep layering compost pile. Let's do it. And another important thing to know about your compost pile when you're building one, besides the four things you need to feed it, which is water, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. It also needs to be a certain size. The smallest it can be is one cubic yard or one cubic meter, so three foot by three foot by three foot. You can also use animal manures as a nitrogen. If you're using a really high carbon, like wood chips, and nothing but wood chips, I would suggest using some sort of animal manures because it's higher in nitrogen that help balance out the higher in carbon wood chips. Now it's a pretty rainy, dreary day today. So all this material is wet, and it's getting wet as I'm mixing it together. 
But if you're doing this on a dry day, a hot day, something like that, you would want to spray it down with a hose as you're going to keep your, all your materials wet. So I'm going to put a big pile of plantain, big pile of green material right in the middle. This big pile of green material is actually an inoculant. Will break down faster, will heat the middle of the pile up faster, and help start the process off faster. The composting process off. And I got all these plantain leaves just from out in the field, out in the yard, walking around the property. It's a very hardy plant that grows pretty much year round. When it freezes, it pretty much just freezes in place. And when it thaws out, it starts growing again. It's still green when it freezes and alive when it thaws out. You can also use any other type of really green material to inoculate the middle of the pile like this. You can also use a dead animal, a small dead animal you can put in the middle. It will also inoculate the pile. The grass clippings are already starting to break down. I'm not sure if you guys can see any of the steam coming off it. But I definitely feel they're a lot warmer than everything else. Give you a walk around let you know all the sides are pretty much the same the pile sitting about four foot tall maybe a little bit taller it's a good five to six foot wide so this would be day one so on day four we're gonna come here and we're gonna come turn it completely over we're gonna take it from this spot we're gonna move it right next to it turning the outside into the inside the, the inside to the outside that's gonna do is gonna help it cook again by that fourth day it should be cooking pretty good it should be pretty hot in there um, and by turning it that's gonna kill off a lot of the bacteria their new bacteria that's coming in is gonna feed off the old bacteria that died multiply quicker break down the material into compost a lot quicker so the size of the compost pile is recommended at least minimum one cubic yard so three foot by three foot by three foot uh, this one that we built is about four foot high, maybe four and a half foot high to uh, six, six foot wide. So it's plenty of big to be able to heat up in the middle. And that's the reason we want them that big because if it's not big enough, it doesn't have enough mass to be able to heat up and decompose um, in a hot compost. So this is gonna be fun, guys. Let me show you something else I did today. Almost forgot to tell you about my last step. Whiskers is walking on it, but I'm going to take this tarp right here and I'm going to cover the compost tile with it. That helps keep it moist so the evaporation when it comes up it stays in the compost pile and also helps keep some of the heat in so it doesn't cool down as fast. So I'm up on the porch and let me show you what I was talking about down there at the compost pile. We're starting some seeds, baby. Starting some seeds. Yeah, back here we have arugula, there is nine flats, six pods in each flat. Right here we have romaine lettuce, there's 12 flats, six pods in each flat. And right here we're starting some spinach. That's right, time to start some seeds. All these little flats that I got, um, these are from plants that I bought last year. I don't plant every single seed myself. I do buy some starts. And it's just it's just only me planting, so it's easy. It's, it's a good way for me to cut out some labor real quick and cut out some time um, and support someone local that's growing seedlings or seedlings. Let me take you inside and show you where I'm gonna start these things. I'm not starting them outside. All right, so we're inside. And that window is a southern facing window. And we have a little table set up and the seeds will sit there and I'll rotate them when they start coming up I'll, I'll turn them when they start coming up so they're not all leaning towards the window and I'll show y'all in a later video when I'm gonna be planting them in 
little hoop houses in the back field. Thank y'all for watching, I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification so you know every time we put a video out. Go ahead and like this and share it with your friends. Maybe they'll be interested in how to make a compost pile.